hands, ice on the window pane, pitch your postcard scene outside, hang you on a tree and let the board serenade you, let you chill out in your own time. And uh, the next wine poem is owed to a bottle of wine. Uh, I don't write many odds. The only odd I ever wrote was in a credit union. You came, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you came in bleak November, beguiling in that tantalizing pose, reeking of aromas, exotic hues and aging tones, and with a hint of green bobbing along on brilliant bubble plain. You put the sparkle back into my life as taste buds that had lingered in the doldrum for decades began hitting the high notes again. And for a few golden hours, I rubbed shoulders with the gods again. Cradled vineyards in the palm of my hand. Savoured a small talk and the gossip. I immersed myself in the tang of earthy overtones. Forgotten now the score stakers, the months of caste captivity. As you could have swayed through my desires. Captivating all with that all-pampering presence. And so I give you this bedraggled ore. This tribute to Grand Cluster and his kin, time for the festivities to begin. Now, I just want to read some of my own poems on the way. In the first poem, I have three poems in this little collection, which is published by Latin in Belfast. The, the three poems have won, they have all won the trophy, the Portofingal trophy, over the past three years. And the argument going now, can I keep the cup? I don't know, they don't want me to deny the first, they all have the same amount of syllables, the three poems. And this is the first one, it's called Counting Stained Glass Windows. Shouldn't I be spellbound, speechless, overwhelmed by the thought of just being there at the scene, rubbing shoulders with the principals, Jesus, Mary, the women of Jerusalem, the Magdalene. I shouldn't I be up there at the foot of the cross, watching, winching, instead of lightning on the periphery, between the final blessing and the Sunday game the last pew on the porch, counting candlesticks and statues and stained glass windows. That's what I do with a one mass. Right? <laughs> <laughs> here, here's a poem from my younger days. Uh, we used to fish under this little bridge called Culbert, this poem. We used to fish for whales there, under the old stone bridge, a neighbour and myself, barefoot and jam jarred to the teeth. And heaven was a handful of sticklebacks then, some were salting in the sun. The cars exploding overhead, the voice of God above, and I was Peter, James and John, all rolled into one. Now would we leave until the, the half an hour after the last rays of the sun had slid be below the trees in Jackson's field. And once when a hard, unblinking moon climbed high above the ruins of Neville's old house, we had a minute's silence for the sticklebacks as they floated belly up between lace curtains of cow pastry. Now, I wonder, I want to the <laughs> This is about uh, a little figurine that we had at home. And it reminded me of an aunt I had. I mean, and anyway, with a poem called Figurine. And it's one of the Gerald Manley Hopkins Award way back. For years you stood in the shade unnoticed. Surviving several changes of wallpaper between the chipped milkmaid and the cap of the Monte Granny. The contours of your crinoline rigid, hair set permanently under the cold glaze. Wide-eyed, aloof, alone in your world of bric-a-brac and dust. A lady of leisure too, except for the odd job, propping up a postcard, a paperweight, until you fell, that is, and picking up the pieces, we discussed your origin. An arm here, a leg there, and the aristocratic head, still smiling, <coughs> spent nail-biting hours tending your wounds, moved you out into the sunlight. Now we change the wallpaper to match your eyes, take you gently by the arm, load the dust from your shoulders, pull your leg. This one is for the farmers. Yeah, okay. Big quest is the name of it. 256 statue acres, three roads and seven perch of well water pasture land with ample shelter belts and all appurtenances thereon, being the whole lease signed, sealed and delivered in parchment. And to the poacher, strolling where the orchestra of reeds takes its cue from the downstroke of the Lincoln ghost, and the black thorns sidestep the cattle track 
all this plus the rustling of a pheasant in the heather. Together and notwithstanding the spectacle of a kingfisher cat walking, cat walking upstream at sunset, plus the hush of a thousand spellbinding sunsets. Uh, up the road from where I grew up is a little cottage and I belonged to Dean Swift, Jonathan Swift, we call him Dean Swift in Trent, Jonathan Swift everywhere else. And he had a mistress called Stella Johnson, Esther, and he installed her in there. And later on, uh, uh, long after their time, the little house fell into rack and ruin and it was bought by a local farmer who used to have, uh, have all, store all these potatoes. And my job was to um, uh, sort them potatoes. Okay. Stella's cottage, smothered in autumn now. It's shrunken walls still fighting off the beams. As youngsters, we used to sack potatoes there on damp days under the tender dry patch. Hunkered and cramped as we rummaged among the gaunt growths for pinks and banners and the odd golden wonder rubbing shoulders with the rat rat. And where it is said forbidden fruit once flourished and the angels strayed in from the straight and narrow we slung pouring through the rough door without as much as a thought for the ghost that might have stood in the steps. Stella's cottage, struggling with September, what ghost stands there now? My sack is full, you a crumpled pile in the corner. The thatch has given way to bramble, spring and sky, and by the rough door wild potatoes pose for a puzzled passerby. So what ghost stands there now? What spirit lurks in this skip full of briars by the roadside? Now,